So how many of you went looking for a combo video on YouTube for your character and didn't know which combo to pick from the 100 plus that were shown? Maybe you felt ready after 10 hours of performing that combo in training mode, then you went to go online and realized you couldn't land it. Oh no! If this is you, don't feel bad. This is the same thing I and many other players did when they first started getting into fighting games. Instead of focusing on the biggest, flashiest, and most damaging combos Twitter has to offer, today I want to talk with you about building your combo game as a beginner and having intentionality behind your combos. Then, when your execution gets better, we want to talk about how to level up your combo game and continue to evolve it as you improve. Quick note, this is meant as a companion piece to my previous video, so if you have not seen that new one, I'd highly recommend watching that first and then coming back here as it talks about how to start developing your strategy when you are brand new. All right, let's have a brief discussion about philosophy before we start jumping into specific examples. First thing I want you to ask yourself is, why do we do combos? So a lot of people, when they start off playing a fighting game, they think the only real reason for a combo is really just to do the most damage that you can. And it certainly can be that, but that's not true in every single situation. Although you might be able to go for your biggest, most damaging combo, if it's not gonna kill, there's a lot of times it won't actually be worth it for you to go for that giant combo. A lot of the times, going for a smaller positional advantage will be more beneficial to you. In a fighting game, we'd want to go for a positional advantage because it's going to allow us to set up a more advantageous situation for us to get our next hit. So let's look at a situation where gaining a better position is probably better than going for max damage. So right now, we'll say we're at round start and we'll do the same combo that I did before, that jump in, DP to DP combo that we have there. Now, did about 70% damage to Kami. Probably not Ken's actual most damaging string, but let's just go with it for right now. So, where did that leave us after the combo? After the combo, the Kami and myself are both at relatively the same amount of stage control and have almost the same amount of distance to walk. So when it comes to getting our next hit, it's going to be considered a relatively clean hit. It will be an even neutral win for either of us. All right, now let's consider the exact same situation, the jump in, but instead I'm gonna go for Tatsu. When we hit Ken's Tatsu, notice that now Kami is put into the corner. And this is what we mean when we say a positional advantage. I, the Ken player, have this entire space of the screen to work and operate and do my moves, apply my pressure, do whatever I want. But the Kami player only has that little bit of room that she has right there, right? So her only options are to sit there and block, maybe go for a risky jump out. The point is we have limited the opponent's options and given ourselves an advantageous state. So when we try and go for our next interaction with the opponent, we have a higher likelihood of coming out on top. Now there are other forms of disadvantage that you could consider when doing a combo. Certainly one of them would be maybe doing a combo that's going to put your opponent into a burnout state. So even though you might not have maximum damage, taking that route will put them into that disadvantaged position. Another thing that can also be a consideration is a reset. So essentially you might come in and try and drop your combo early where the player is not expecting to have to block a certain way. So you could then go for, let's just do this, boom, boom. But you didn't expect that you have to block now because I stopped. So instead I go for a crouching medium to EX Tatsu. Not really a great example with Ken. I don't know many resets with Ken. But the point still stands is there are many other things that you could do instead of just going for your most damaging combo because you could potentially afterwards get a more damaging combo that would kill. So after talking about why we combo, we can actually see there's a ton of decision making that players have to make when it comes to choosing a combo. So we're gonna walk through three stages of evolution for your combo game. I know this can be overwhelming when you're just starting off, but don't worry, we'll be taking a crawl, walk, run methodology with this combo video. When you're new, just worry about the foundation. We'll continue to work on the execution over time and we'll build that foundation so you have an advanced combo game later on.
Okay, I want to start talking about the first stage of developing your combo game. And before we get going, I do want to mention the expectation of this is that you are able to do a normal to special cancel. So if you are not capable of doing that, I would recommend going back to my previous video and working on those concepts and fundamentals first. So the first stage in developing our combo game will be designing a combo around each of our primary openers. So we'll definitely want to have something that opens with low. We'll want to have a mid option. We'll want to have something for jumping or overhead if your character happens to have an option like that. We'll want to have something that could be considered like a long range shimmy or a whiff punish. And we'll definitely also want to consider drive impact. All right, let's start doing this with Ken. And my first bit of advice would be use the same core for your combos wherever possible. So let's do this for an example. We'll use this medium punch to heavy punch target combo as the core of our combo. So with this core, let's go ahead and add a special move at the end. Maybe it would be heavy DP. But keep within the realistic realms of your execution. If you're only at fireball, just go fireball. If you can do quarter circle back for kick to do a tatsu, do that. But build something that is realistic to what you'll actually be expected to do. All right, let's build a low combo starter. For most characters, you'll be having to use crouching light kick or crouching medium kick. I'd recommend using light kick, especially if you're just starting off, even though the combo will be a little harder. Hit confirming from a crouching medium kick, at least for me, is pretty difficult. I'm not amazing or anything, so I'd recommend starting with your crouching light kick. But let's design a simple combo. For Ken, we'll do crouching light kick, crouching light punch, then we'll go into light tatsu, into medium DP, and then we can put it all together. And there you go, a relatively simple low combo starter. For light combos, we weren't really able to go with that core combo that we built, but for something like jumping, we certainly can. So on your character, pick what your best jump in option is. If you have one that might be able to cross up, maybe you'll want to consider that so you always have that as an option. But generally speaking, either your heavy punch is going to be doing the most damage or your jumping heavy kick is going to have something like the most. But whatever you choose as your jumping option, simply add your core behind it. And then boom, now you have a jumping combo. So for a shimmy or a whiff punish, we'll probably want to have the combo starter be one of our heavy buttons, something that's relatively long range to poke back. So for Ken, we'll do something relatively simple. We'll be using just the heavy punch, and then we'll do the kick cancel into the DP. And lastly, we'll want to consider a drive impact combo. I'm going to do this drive impact in the corner, but you don't need to go crazy. You could just do something nice and simple. So we'll go drive impact to DP, our same mid combo. What's important is having all of these situations be mapped out in your head. So when they arise in the game, you actually know what to do and you're prepared. And one thing I want to address before somebody goes down and is saying it in the comments, no, none of these combos I would say are optimal. There are better things that you could do after each and every one of them. But that's not the point here. The point is, let's get you in the door. Let's get you used to doing some combos. And then we can continue to evolve it in the future. Okay, now that we've developed our base combo set, let's talk about branching these combos into combos that are used for different situations. So the first situation we're going to take a look at is probably the one most people expect, which would be a combo for big damage. I'm not going to be going into every single one of the strings. I'll pretty much just be building off of a couple of them for these examples, but go through this exercise with your character. And also remember, continue to build your combo game as your execution improves. You don't have to have everything figured out right out the gate. So for Ken, we used our target combo to heavy DP as our mid option, but now maybe we can add a little more damage, throw some little more sauce in there. So we could do our run cancel to heavy DP. Or we could do DP kick to heavy DP. And we're continuing to build our damage. But what's most important is stay within the limits of your execution. If you can't hit this combo online or against a real player, it doesn't matter. So continue to iterate as you improve. 
So now you're going to want to identify your positional advantage combo. And a lot of characters already have a move that's designed to move characters further on the screen. So for Ken, this might just be our basic Tatsu. We also have the ability for Ken to go for his run. So you could go for this combo as well. Just keep within the limits of your execution, but look for your character as to what is going to be the best option. You might also have something that maybe it's gonna leave you pretty close. For Ken, we'd still probably go with Tatsu, but so you can do pressure on their wake up. So as the Kami got up, now we could go up here and run our next mix up and then do our next mix up like this. So something that's going to either put the opponent into the corner, disadvantage state, or going to put you right next to them so the opponent is still waking up into your pressure. Again, a disadvantaged state. So we built out a combo tree for each particular starter, and then we started to branch those combos for each particular situation that we would like. Now is the last part of this, and it's about adding the sauce. So adding the sauce is gonna be highly specialized to each individual character. So I'll just be giving some general tips as well as some potential pathways for you to consider when it comes to customizing your combos. So the first recommendation I would say is to use some of your OD moves in your combos. You typically gain a decent amount of utility when you use them. So for Ken, if we do his DP, you'll now be getting a little bit more damage. If you use Tatsu, you'll be getting more corner carry than the standard heavy Tatsu. You might even get additional juggle properties after a new EX move. So just think of these as some potentials to explore with your character. Another route to consider is places where you can throw in your supers. You do have three supers, so I'd recommend identifying combos in the game, hopefully the ones that you already have, that you can just add those supers on. The next place I would start to look is trying to implement Drive Rush into your combos. There's a ton of complexity here. I'm not even beginning to act like I have it all down at this point, but it allows to take maybe your like basic whiff punishes and evolve them even further. Doing a move out of Drive Rush as well does give you enhanced frame advantage, so you can reach combos that weren't available before. So definitely consider that as well. Hitting someone and triggering a punish counter or a counter hit is also gonna give you some enhanced frame advantage, so it might be good to learn a couple combos out of that from your key starters. So these last two, I don't have any specific examples for with Ken, unfortunately, but I did wanna mention them very quickly. One of them would be standing versus crouching combos. So when the opponent is standing versus crouching, there is slightly different combos that will be able to work. So you might wanna lab out some of those for some specific examples. Generally speaking, when you're starting out, I wouldn't worry about it, but this would be for the very advanced players who want to continue to push their advantage to the maximum. The other type of combo to consider would be something like a corner combo, something that's only gonna work when your opponent's straight in the corner and you can use the wall to keep them closer and hit some different moves. Thank you very much for making it this far. I'm hoping this gave you a good roadmap on how to start developing your combo game, how to add some intentionality behind your combos and decision making, and also some ideas on how to add some sauce and creativity to your combos. I by no means know everything, so I'd love to hear your ideas and how to help out other beginners in the comments down below. Thank you very much for making it this far. If you enjoyed this, please give me a like and a sub and help out more than you know. I hope I was able to help you enjoy fighting games just a little bit more. Until next time, have an amazing day and later fam.